Hello, I'm Bishop Eric Frederick, Bishop and Overseer of Rivers of Living Water, Global Empowerment Ministries. I want to personally thank you for tuning in to today's Bible study, where we will be journeying through the Word of God. I invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy today's journey through the Bible. Hey, good evening. This is Bishop Eric Frederick again. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us for another Rivers of Living Water Global Empowerment Ministries Bible Study. Uh, this study is called The Real Culture Vultures, and it's talking about the conspiracy to wipe out Israel's culture, religion, and customs. So I just invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy to today's word. Hey, today's study will be coming from the book of Daniel. Uh, but before we dive in, uh, we want to uh, just recap our last uh, our last study. Uh, it comes from the book of Psalms, chapter eighty three, verse one through eight. And God, it says, "O God, do not keep silent; do not hold your peace, or be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make an uproar. Those who hate you have raised their heads. They lay crafty plans against your people. They consult together against your treasured ones. They say, Come." Let us wipe out, wipe them out as a nation. Let the name of Israel be remembered no more. For they conspire uh, with one accord against, the, uh, against you, they make a covenant. The tents of Edom uh, the, and the Ismaelites, Moab and the Hagarites, Gabal and, and Amma and Ammon and Amalek, uh, Philistia, with the inhabitants of, inhabitants of Tyre. Asher also has joined them they are the strong arm of the children of Lot. So we're looking at this conspiracy and uh, specifically, uh, we're gonna look again at the nation of uh, Asher or Assyria. And we're gonna, we're gonna continue to look at their role uh, in the destruction of Israel and the silencing uh, of that nation and that culture. So Deuteronomy 10 verse 12 through 14 says, then he said to me, fear not, Daniel, uh, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humble and humble yourself before your God, your words have been heard and I have come across of your words. And I want you to pay particular attention here. Uh, it's talking about the spiritual warfare that is going on uh, in the nation of Persia. And we got to realize that, you know, we, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but principalities and power and spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, but also those, those principalities and powers, they use nations and people uh, to carry out their bidding, uh, else they wouldn't be able to be effective. Uh, so we see that uh, in Persia, uh, there was a, a demonic angel uh, that was fighting against the messenger Michael uh, because uh, Michael was trying to bring a message to Daniel that would bring revelation uh, to uh, Daniel and the children of Israel who were uh, in Babylon. It says the prince of, prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of the chief princesses, and Michael is the angel of Israel, came to help me. For I was left there with the kings of Persia and came to make you understand what is to happen uh, to you, to your people in the latter days for the vision is for uh, days yet to come. So let's look at what happened to Daniel and these, these Hebrew boys and not only them, but it was uh, the wealthy and uh, the, the children uh, of the uh, elite and the children of the uh, uh, royal house and how they were taken into Babylon to serve the Babylonian king and what, what, what happened to them. Uh, Daniel 1, uh, one through two says, in the third year of the reign of jo Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and, and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands uh, with some of the vessels of the house of God. And I want you to, I want you to mark that because every kingdom that's going to come up against Israel, first they're going to go into the, into the temple and they're going to rob God's temple. They're going to take uh, out the uh, the vessels of, of gold and silver and uh, all the holy things that, were, that are in uh, the house of God. So Nebuchadnezzar and his king, 
where Nebuchadnezzar and his people, his soldiers, went in and did the same thing. And he brought them uh, to the land of Shinar, to, to, to the house of his God. So he's taking, he's robbing the temple of God. And he's taking uh, the things out of the temple of God and he's taking them and he's putting them in his own uh, house uh, of his God and place the vessels in, in his treasury of his God. Then the king commanded Asphanes, the chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, of both the royal family and of the nobility, use uh, without blemish, of good appearance and skillful in all wisdom, endowed in knowledge, understanding, and learning, and competent to stand in the king's palace. So they, they didn't just get anybody. Uh, they got the best of the nation of Israel. They got people from the royal family, the, the intelligent uh, young men who will be able to benefit and bless uh, the kingdom of Babylon. And, and what did they do? It says, and, and to teach them uh, the literature and language of the Chaldeans. So they wanted to give them a, a good brainwashing, you know, because, you know, we see that how the nations conspired to wipe out the name of Israel and how they uh, wanted Israel's name not to be remembered anymore. So this is what the, this is what kingdoms do. They come in and they begin to uh, begin to indoctrinate the children, the young people. Begin to give them uh, a Babylonian education to teach them the literature of Babylon, to teach them the language of the Babylonians, and to really change their culture. That that's the that's the main goal is to take their culture away from them and. and Instead of their own culture, they would uh, assimilate into the uh, Babylonian culture. Verse five uh, says the king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate and of the wine that he drank. Here's another, here's another form of assimilation. Uh, they're, they're taking away uh, the food that, the, uh, that these Hebrew boys usually ate uh, from their own culture uh, and, and they were they had laws and and uh, customs that they that uh, that were commandments that, that they things that they couldn't eat and things that God told them that was uh, okay for them to eat. But here the king wants to give them uh, his own diet. So uh, your diet is is a link to your culture. You know, a lot of times you can tell uh, what culture people are a part of by what they eat. Uh, like uh, pizza is, is Italian. So if you see people eating uh, pizza, you know uh, that's linked to uh, the nation of Italy. Uh, and verse five says they were to be educated for three years. And at the end of, the, uh, of that time, they were to stand before the king. So they were giving them an education of three years. And you think about you know, what happened to us here in America, we, we get an education of 12 years. And that education uh, has nothing to do with our culture as, as black people in America. That education is to indoctrinate us instead of, instead of educate us. You know, if it was an education, then they would give you uh, information about your own culture, information about where you came from and about uh, your, your own uh, customs. Uh, but instead they give you an education of uh, the American or the, uh, you, uh, or the uh, European customs. Uh, verse six, among these were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah of the tribe of Judah. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them names. So, so now they're getting rid of, they, they, try, they changed their location. They took them out of Israel, brought them into, into the land of Babylon. Uh, they attempted to change uh, their diet. And now they're getting ready to try to change their names. Uh, he said that, and the chief of the units gave them names. Daniel, he called Balthazar. Hananiah, he called Shadrach. Mishael, he called Meshach. And Azariah, he called Abednego. So he changed their names. And, and these names are important because, you know, the Lord says uh, that, that we are called by his name. So that Daniel, El, is God. Hananiah. Yah is God, Mishael and Azariah. So they are called by the name of God. Every time uh, their mothers will, and fathers will call their names, they will be reminded of their God. So what Babylon wanted to do, they wanted to change that 
to where uh, when they call, when people call their names, they would be calling the Babylonian gods' names. Daniel 3, 8 through 12 says, therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. They declared to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the harp, the bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. Okay, now they're getting ready to try to attack their, their worship and who they worship. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the burning fiery furnace. So they, got, so they gave the Hebrew boys an incentive. If you don't worship, uh, we're gonna throw you into this fiery furnace. Uh, that, that's some pressure, right? There, there are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. So these people were jealous of these Hebrew boys because they were anointed and they wanted to see them destroyed. So uh, they went and told the king that uh, these Hebrew boys wouldn't, wouldn't worship, wouldn't, wouldn't fall down and worship this golden idol. Now, uh, Daniel 6 and 7 says, all the high officials of the kingdom, the perfects and the satraps, the counselors and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an, an ordinance and enforce an injunction that whoever makes a petition to any god or man for 30 days, except for you, O king, shall be cast into the dens of, den of lions. So after the uh, after the uh, the uh, the golden image uh, didn't work, that they devised another scheme. So they got the king to say, uh, make a decree that whoever uh, prayed to any other any other person other than the king for a certain period uh, will be thrown into the lion's den. And we see that we know that Daniel uh, didn't fall for it. Daniel went and opened up his window like he always did. And he prayed uh, three times a day to the God most high. And he was thrown into the lion's den and the Lord, uh, the Lord saved him. So we see that they're trying to change, they try to change their God. They're trying to change their prayer. They're trying to change everything about these boys. So where else do we see this same game being played? We see it being played in the transatlantic slave trade. Uh, we see that the African-Americans or the Africans who were caught up in the slave trade that went to the different nations, uh, scattered all over the, to the four corners of the world as slaves. Uh, they were removed far from their country. Uh, the best of our people were brought to other nations to enrich them. Our names were changed to erase all traces of our identity. We were trained in the literature and the language of the nations that enslaved our ancestors, but not our own language and cultures. In other words, we were indoctrinated and we were assimilated. Our culture, history, and religion uh, were stripped from us. In other words, we see the same game. Coincidence? I think not. Amen. So there you have it. Uh, I pray that this has given you insight into the real culture vultures and the conspiracy of the nations to wipe out Israel's culture, their religion, customs, and identity. Like I said earlier, this is just another piece of the puzzle. As you continue to tune in, uh, you will learn more and find out where the pieces fit to see the larger picture of what God is doing in the earth. The next study will discuss the actions of the Greeks uh, and, and the actions that they took to try to destroy the identity and memory of Israel. I pray that this uh, was edifying to you and uplifting. Uh, and I pray that you would subscribe to the channel, uh, like this video, hit the bell so that you will be notified when I upload a new video and share with someone you think will be blessed by this information. And as always, I wish you salam. So